Hello everyone. In this episode, we're going to do this. Create a React component using Figma MCP, Visual Studio Code, RuCode, and Google Gemini AI. So React, of course, is a front-end framework. Figma MCP is the new Figma model content protocol connection where we can connect Figma to Visual Studio Code. And then through RuCode, which is a extension that allows you to plug in a LLM and then use it, we're going to use Google Gemini AI to convert a button component to its React version, along with a storybook to play around with it. And here's what we're going to be going through. The intro, which we're basically already done, the requirements you need, so which software and services, the setup of them. Then we're going to generate the button component, refine it, do a bit of testing, and then if all goes well, it'll be bye-bye time. And of course, first up, you're going to need Figma, and you're going to need the paid version because Figma MCP only works with dev mode and Figma Code Connect to actually make the connection with Visual Studio Code. So set it up, sign up for their cheapest plan probably, and then download the desktop app because this also doesn't work unless you're coming from the desktop app. Next up, you're going to need Visual Studio Code. Again, just go and download it. Now, this is completely free. You can download it, install it, and you'll be up and running in no time. Then you're going to need to install the RuCode extension for Visual Studio Code. And then lastly, go to Google AI for developers, sign up for an account, add your billing information. Then you're also going to need what I've added a link to in the description, which is the Figma file that we're going to use that you can import into your Figma account, which is based on my own design system called Scale. And then the base project, which is an a zip file that you can unzip and then open in Visual Studio Code. Once you've installed Figma and logged in, you should be seeing something like this. Now, I've gone ahead and created a project called AI, so you can go and do that too. And let's go over to Finder and grab the Figma file that you downloaded. And here's the contents of the zip file that you downloaded with the Figma file in it. And we'll get into the context file and styles a little bit later. But let's just grab this and drag it in. Okay, that's done. Let's open it. All right, go to the button page, select the button component, just zoom in, and you can see that it's got primary, secondary, tertiary, tertiary mono, inverse mono, outline, outline mono, and text, text mono, negative primary, negative outline, and negative text. So these are like destructive buttons, but the rest are just your stock standard buttons that you'd get out of a design system button component. And if we zoom back out, we're going to try and convert all of this into a React component, including the spinners. So that's why this file has the spinner component in it, the icons, which come in 16, 24, and 32. And since these are feather icons, we can use the React version of the feather icons library to map them when we're building the component. Let's come back to the button component and move on to the next step, which is Visual Studio Code. Let's go and open it and then open the folder that we just saw before. Find that folder and then open it. And with everything open on the left, let's install the RuCode extension. Now, you can either do that from their website or you can come over here on the left, go to Extensions, search for RuCode, and then install it here. And with it installed, we're going to come over to the right here and hit this toggle secondary sidebar. RuCode is now already there. Let's just close this window, right? Uh, but it can't do anything. It needs an agent. So let's go and set up Google AI and get an API key that we're going to enter into here so we can start working. And you can sign in with your Gmail account. I've created one specifically for this. And once you've logged into Google AI Studio, you're going to see this page. Let's just go up to the top right and get API key. Then select Create API key. Now, if you tap here, Gemini API is going to come up. I guess that's the default project. Create API key an existing project. So let's copy this, put it in a safe place because you're going to need it to set up RuCode. Back at VS Code, let's go to RuCode. Come down here, so select API configuration. Go to Settings. Add a new one. Let's just call this Gemini. 
select Google Gemini, just pre-select, paste your API key in, and then save. And before we select done, let's go back to AI Studio and set up a billing account. So we're gonna to come to the left, go usage and billing, select billing, go to set up billing. And here we go, we're gonna get $300 in free credit for all the next 90 days. Some people will use that in an afternoon if they are vibe coding like a demon. Select your country and go agree and continue. Then select create new payments profile. Now the rest of this is gonna be kind of blurred out for obvious reasons, but let's keep going. And I select an individual here. Then let's go create, then add payment method. Add a credit card or debit card. Add your details and select save card and then select start free. All right, so we select this. There's our project. We've set up billing. So let's go and see if RuCode works. And back in RuCode, let's just go down to the model and change this to 2.5 Pro. Open up advanced settings. Make sure rate limit is set to zero. And then just save. Go done. And then I'm just gonna enter hello. Cool, I'm just gonna press cancel. Now I've gone ahead and added an extra file, MCP settings here in the context folder. Let's just copy this. Go back to RuCode, come up to the more icon, hit MCP servers, edit global MCP, select everything, paste that in there and save. All right. Now this is showing up as running but let's go and select always allow on everything. That just makes things faster when you're actually doing this. Let's go done. Okay, let's go back to Figma, select the button component and see if it can see it. And let's just check whether the MCP server is running, it is. And back in RuCode, I'm just gonna type can you tell me what component I have selected in Figma? Okay, it's gonna run the get code command. Okay, now it's gonna use get image. Okay, so it has seen that I've selected button Right, so I could just launch straight into creating it, but I wanna ask it another question. Tell me what its variance properties, styles, and structure is. because I just wanna make sure that it can see everything and pull all of this information out before we continue. All right, one more thing. Map its styles to the variables that you can find here. And I'm just gonna go at, add the folder, and then go down to styles and enter. Hopefully that's gonna go find the color that it can see in that component and then map it to the variables that we have in these files. So Gemini via RuCode has gone through and tried to remap everything. And it can still remember all of this because it's in the same context window, right? But I just want it now to run through this context file, right? So create a React version of the select Figma component and then follow all of these steps. So let's see how it goes. I'm just gonna add this file. And here we go.
Okay, it's created a to-do list. Let's approve it. All right, you can see the button folder pop in there. It's in the components. And it's starting to write actual files now by itself. It's ridiculous. We can see the button props coming in and we can see the use of our semantic variables. All right, this looks good so far. So let's just sit back and enjoy the show. It's gotten us this far. Let's approve and just keep on going. Let's ask it how we can preview this in Storybook. How can we preview the button component in Storybook? It's probably going to tell me to do something like npm run build or run dev. There you go, npn run storybook. Wasn't far off. Let's run it. Okay, we've got a storybook page, but none of the styles are showing up, right? So if I select a primary button, it's not blue. Let's inspect this and see if there's anything actually just showing up. All right, so background color is there, but the preview is just broken. So let's get it to try and fix it. Storybook is displaying the button page, but not displaying the styles. Can you fix this? Let's see. Okay, now it says everything is complete. Let's go back to Storybook and see if that's true. Okay, and it looks like almost everything has worked. We've got a button that has a hover and press state. You can change it to secondary or mono. Let's go back to primary, but there's no leading or trailing icon. So let's see if it'll add them. So we're just gonna enter in the leading and trailing icons are missing. Can you re-scan the button component in Figma for these properties and use Feather React Library to add the icons to our button component. Okay, so now it's going back to Figma to rescan the component. Okay, so it's going through and making all of the necessary changes. We can see that here. Okay, let's go back to Storybook and see if that worked. Okay, if we look at the properties, there's no controls for them, but we scroll down, we've got a leading icon here and a trailing icon, leading and a trailing icon, but it's not exactly what we want. Let's go and see if it can change these properties that then bind themselves to the name of the icon. Can you change the leading icon and trailing icon props to only show when an icon has been selected from a string dropdown? Now, some of that might not make sense, but I've already done this before in a previous component. So let's see what it does. And I'm just gonna respell that correctly. Here we go. Okay, it's gonna fix its own TypeScript errors. Okay, if you've gotten this far, you can tell that you're gonna be doing a lot of back and forth between the agent and storybook. So let's go back and see what happened. Okay, we've got dropdowns that seem to be working. Let's add bell, awesome. And the trailing one, let's add copy. Great. So that seems to be working. Let's change this to small. Do they still stay there? Yes. Medium. Yeah. Large. The spacing could probably be improved. 
Secondary still keeps them, makes them the color they're supposed to be. Mono should make them white. Awesome. All right, now let's see if the loading is still the default one. It is. Let's go and replace this. Can you replace the native loader you have used with one that looks like spinner component in the Figma file. Now I'm going to go and select that just so I can pick it up. That I have selected. Okay, so it's pulled out a SVG. Added the width and height. Add CSS transforms to do the spinning. Created a spinner component to do it. And now it's going to add it to the button. Okay, let's go and turn on the loader. All right, it looks like it's working. Let's go to negative primary. Fantastic. Okay, let's turn it off. Now, children here is actually labeled. So let's go change that. Change the property called children to label. Let's check if that worked. Okay, that looks fine. Let's remove the state because it happens automatically. Remove state property from the storybook props list. Okay, moment of truth uh, number 68. Okay, it still has hover and press, so that's fine. But everything's cleaned up now. Okay, so it's pretty crazy that a designer like me and probably you can even get to this point where we're creating a React component from a Figma component and it's all been assisted by AI, right? Which brings us to the end. I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.